Right now, below the boat, lies one of the richest ecosystems in the world. These reefs are situated in the Bird's Head Archipelago of Indonesia. I'm very fortunate today to be joined by scientists, filmmakers, photographers and artists from around the globe to explore this region. So I've come along on the Elysium expedition as principal scientist sampling for microplastics in the marine environment. So my role here is to assess plastic pollution throughout the Coral Triangle. And we're really interested in this because Indonesia is actually the second largest contributor to marine plastic behind China. So what we want to do is assess how is plastic pollution affecting this area. And we're going to do this by sampling surface waters for any plastic that might occur. And at the end of all of this, we'll be able to work out what's the most abundant form of plastic pollution in this area and in what volumes is it accumulating. And this will really help inform policy and NGOs on the state of this area and how it's affected by plastic and hopefully mean that we can better preserve this environment. about to go out and do our first tool of our trip so we're going to be doing surface sampling tooling for microplastics around the bay in Ambon here and we've already been out and done one dive and we've seen quite a lot of plastics and we're quite excited to see what we find. We need a couple of people to basically take up the net and then together we're going to have to deploy it off the side and make sure that it's over the correct side of the hole. and then I need people to help me to bring the net in and then the cod end needs to stay upright. Chock-a-block with plastic. Look at that, you can already see. And look, we've got fish. That's just from 15 minutes and already you can see how much plastic's in there. So this is going to be really interesting. Okay, now back to the lab. Okay, to the lab! <laughs> along the way you'd think that sampling surface waters would be really easy and it normally really is but yesterday for example we caught a whole net full of jellyfish which meant that we couldn't actually use the sample at all because we would either get stung and it was just clogging up the filter paper when we were trying to filter it. So I wanted to share with you a piece of plastic that I found on one of my trawls last night. Just get it out for you. And this is a plastic sticker that would be placed on something after it's been manufactured. Here we are, made in the USA. And this is an extremely poignant piece of plastic. In fact, the most poignant I think we found because this gives a fingerprint for exactly where this product was made. 
And this just supports the notion that plastic pollution is a global problem. Things being manufactured in other countries a world away are ending up in the ocean here. So what's really poignant about finding this piece of plastic is that it was found in an area where there was a lot of biodiversity. So you can see here all of the unfortunate victims that I caught during the trawl. Small fish, cuttlefish and squid. All sorts of organisms. And so plastic is accumulating and being found in environments that are really important for biodiversity. Areas such as nurseries for small fish and other organisms. So we really, really need to address this situation as a global team together to ensure that the products that we manufacture elsewhere don't end up in the ocean somewhere else. Because plastic pollution isn't just a problem of one country and for one country's coastlines or seas, it's everybody's problem. I've got the concentrated sample here from our trawls and I'm transferring it into a Buckner funnel where I'm concentrating the sample onto a filter paper so that I can then look under the microscope and see what tiny bits of plastic we've collected. So I'm currently looking through one of the trawls that we've conducted and I'm looking through the smaller stuff so I've already had a look to see if there was any macro plastic which are larger pieces of plastic uh, but I didn't find any so I'm now looking through the small little bits that I collected uh, seeing if I can see any fragments or different types of plastic that might have been there in the sample at all. So on the trip so far I've found a real different variety of plastics from really big bits such as plastic bags and then also really tiny bits such as fibres and what I found is that plastic pollution is abundant, it is widespread but it really changes from location to location and so I think it very much depends on the currents and the topography of the area and potentially how many people are living there as to what type of plastic that you find. So we're just about to go out and do a recreational dive under a jetty and so we're going to be looking at what coral and fish species are there but also importantly we're going to be looking for any plastic that might occur around this village. some plastic bottles up behind the boat yep. as well. So again that seemed to be an area that had quite a lot of plastic and I think that was contributed to the fact that it was the mouth of the river and probably quite a lot of plastic flowing downstream. Before this trip I just read what my husband told me is the fabric in the clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the most abundant form of plastic pollution in the ocean. Yeah. Micro I know you microfibers are our biggest problem and there is yeah. no mitigation or management of them at the moment and no policy in place yeah. to actually mm -hmm. assess the problem. The industry is changing so you have brands that are now looking at creating their garments yeah. out of organic materials. Yeah. So plastic yeah has only become our enemy because of our poor waste management practices. Yes. If we actually took ownership over plastic and produced it in a way that it could be recycled, then maybe we wouldn't have this problem, but we've really nearly sort of yeah. based our society on immediate gratification yeah. and over-wrapped, over-packaged things and not yeah. taken any ownership yeah. over where it yeah. goes after that. just come back from a really awesome dive. Uh, down deep we had a huge school of oriental sweet lips around a gummy. Um, as if that wasn't good enough, right as we were moving on, uh, we had a, a school of uh, a red snapper passing by and another school of big eye. So it was really, really magical dive site. Um, it was just a little bit sad towards the end as we were surfacing because we, we ended up in a sea of rubbish. Um, the, the whole surface was just littered with rubbish. So most of my work um, is with recycled plastics that are ground up. What I'd like to do is take everything, um, see how it's going to fit, and turn it, turn it into something, a 
aesthetically pleasing mm. and something that is powerful that does bring awareness. So we're sadly just about to leave the boat because we've reached the end of the Elysium expedition but throughout the journey we've learned a lot about how plastic pollution is affecting this area and the truth of it is that it's widespread but it's really random where it's occurring and so really to get a true grasp we'd have to come back and do a more in-depth analysis but this has been a real eye-opener and now we understand that plastic is here and it does affect this area. So my message to take home to my family and friends and everyone throughout the world is really think about the plastic waste that you produce. Ensure that you are responsible for ensuring it gets recycled and if you can avoid it, great. You know, there are lots of alternatives to plastic. And just in general, learn. Learn all you can about the issue because when you're empowered with knowledge, then you can make a difference in everyday life.